A, government orders, business of supply, consideration of, of a, an opposition motion standing in the name of Mr. Rankin regarding the decriminalization of marijuana possession. After the parliamentary secretary's speech, speech the parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Public Safety, um, there remains some time for questions and comments. The Honourable Member for New Westminster, Burnaby. Speaker, and the question that has come up uh, this morning and we've asked repeatedly, uh, given the size and scope... My apologies. My apologies. Appar apparently I'm mistaken. There are five minutes remaining in, this, in his time for speaking, and then we'll go on to questions and comments. My apologies. And I'll have a second time on the The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. I was saying members must be aware, Mr. Speaker, in addition to the enforcement representation on the task force, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice and the member of Scarborough Southwest, who is the former Chief of Toronto Police Service, will work with the task force to engage Canadians on marijuana-related issues. Further, as part of the consultative process, Public Safety Canada will be hosting a law enforcement roundtable on marijuana legalization later this month. This event will focus on key issues related to marijuana legalization and regulation, including priority issues such as organized crime, marijuana sales and distribution, and drug-impaired driving. It's important, Mr. Speaker, to remember or to remind everyone that the law is the law. Canadians should expect that police forces will continue to enforce it. That includes <coughs> laws against uh, the selling marijuana in stores. And so the regulations of uh, medical marijuana um, is the only that can be sold, and only those that are licensed may sell marijuana to patients who have a prescription for it. Over the last few months, we have heard stories from provinces and police forces that dealt with marijuana boutiques that are illegal. And I can assure you that the police services across the country, including the RCMP, have taken and will continue to take uh, enforcement measures against these illegal marijuana stores. And in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, we realize uh, or we are achieving progress. We recognize the motivation underlying this motion, but we intend to uh, keep with the pro agenda that we have. It's a complex issue, and we have to look at uh, the public safety issues tied into this, to the regulations, uh, et cetera, dealing with marijuana. The decriminalization, uh, the immediate decriminalization, would not achieve any of those objectives and would not respect our commitment made to Canadians, that which they uh, expect from us. Canadians do not expect that the Canadian government will act rashly on this very important issue. And I invite all members to join me and vote against this motion. Thank you. And now we'll move to questions and comments. The Honourable Member for New Westminster Bur Burnaby. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate the speech of the member, but the question that we have been asking uh, since this morning over and over is the number of Canadians who are arrested by this new government. Mr. Speaker, on 2014, the last year for which we have figures, the previous Conservative government arrested 57,000 Canadians for a simple possession of marijuana. The Liberals say, well, you know, we're not as bad. but they haven't given any statistics to date that show that there's been a change in the numbers uh, since uh, November 1st, 2015. So I'm going to ask the question again, and I hope I'll get an answer this time. How many Canadians have been arrested by the new Liberal government for simple possession of marijuana since uh, the month of November 2015? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the question. That's a very important question, but it's a troubling one because it uh, highlights the number of Canadians who did not obey the law. And I don't think that there has uh, been any change to the legislation. The law is still the law. It's still enforceable and will continue to enforce it until such time as uh, there are any changes. Park, Fort Saskatchewan. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'm very concerned about the negative health effects uh, of marijuana, and we've heard members of the NDP quote uh, studies and information from the 1970s, seemingly not appreciating the way in which THC content in marijuana has gone up significantly over the intervening years. So I wonder if the member could comment about the health effects, about emerging concerns about links between schizophrenia and marijuana use, especially in the young, even uh, relatively occasional use. And if he would agree with me that we need a strong response that recognizes the risks, that doesn't treat this as if it's something simple or small or not a big deal, but acknowledges that it's a very serious issue and serious health risk when people use marijuana. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank my colleague for the question. Unfortunately, I'm not a doctor, so I can't comment on the medical uh, aspect of this product, but this is exactly the type of concern that we addressed when we set up the uh, working group led by the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice to ensure that people can uh, make uh, proper advice and uh, do uh, the appropriate studies as to the measures to be taken. Questions and comments. Questions and comments? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary of the Government, House Leader. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I wonder if my colleague can provide some comment. You know, I, in, in the last uh, 10 years, we've seen a Conservative government that's been more so the status quo, no change, nothing of that nature. They just want to leave it as, as it is. And then uh, we, uh, in a very progressive fashion, came out with what I believe is a very responsible approach. Uh, with the idea that we want to make sure that there's a consultation, a framework that includes regulations and so forth, the, the objective of taking uh, money out of the hands of criminals um, and to look at youth education and so forth. Then you have the opposition motion, which seems to be exceptionally premature in the sense of just passing a law and having a huge vacuum. And I'm wondering if the member might just want to provide his comments on that thought. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank my colleague for the question, which highlights uh, the essential point of this uh, bill, of this uh, project. The, com the comments we heard from uh, the other side of the House, unfortunately, point to how important it is to keep users safe. So uh, we look at uh, the entire chain from production to use, and if we didn't uh, take uh, all of those transactions into account, it wouldn't be uh, possible to come up uh, with uh, a serious bill. As a government, we are responsible and obliged to uh, be aware of the entire transaction chain to ensure that the uh, product is not accessible to those who are underage and uh, to ensure that the profits from the transactions do not uh, fall into criminal hands. And so it's a question of safety for all Canadians, and that's what uh, a good responsible government does. The Honourable Parliament Secretary